Right, Shalom Rastafari. Greetings. And this is the 27th um, Sabbath in this uh, lunar solar, luni solar um, um, cycle of Torah readings, 2012, April uh, 21st. And now what you have before you is um, three particular images. One of them, I have to move the cover of Witness of the Stars you know, perhaps over here, so you can see the main part of, you know, the main part of the picture here. Now, in this particular book, which we just published, or republished, this particular book, which is actually, and this is one thing, that the update, we had to update it. So anyone who ordered, say, prior to the, the Sabbath, I think there's one or two people. There's a there's a, a update, not in the contents, but in our description of the contents to be more fuller and uh, relevant with the witness of Rastafari revelation. And here's where we have to bring a couple of other um, exhibits, um, present a couple of exhibits to you, so we can make this uh, particular um, connection. And it's a particular connection to he who is the man child, the man child of of revelation. Now, most Christians will say, "Well, the man child is Christ." I mean, and that is that is true in the overall the eschatological sense. Because remember, this particular section is dealing with um, this subject matter here that we've touched on before, and in our Torah portion readings, in the process, the weekly Sabbaths, we tend to go over these portions, and as we're growing and learning much more about it, and also the so-called science, in other words, the modern science that proves certain scientific things that even better explain and exemplify the truth behind this. Now, these are some of the images I'm looking for. I want to find... Uh, one of my images for here is from the Rastafari, the man child. Let us first of all bring up this particular image for the for the man child. Okay. This is the man child. All right. Lij Teferi, born when? Born in eighteen ninety two. Now remember it's the son of man. There's a distinct reference to the son of man and the Son of God in the Scriptures. So make note of this, uh, disciples, Dek uh, Mesamorit, all Dek uh, Mesmor, Mesmors, all, the, all disciples. Make note of this if you're studying this with us. Make note of Son of Man, Son of God, and see how Scriptures define both of these. In fact, the Schofield uh, Bible, the first Schofield Bible, Schofield Reference Bible, it has very good scriptural and basic doctrinal references pertaining to the Bible, pertaining to the non-denominational, not getting into different Christian so-called denominations or factions or demon, demon nominations or whatever, but focusing strictly on the scripture. In other words, explain the scripture so that we will at least comprehend the scripture in itself. You know, because it says it's telling us something in and of itself. And part of that revelation is, 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 of course, earthly, but the first part of it is actually heavenly. So bringing us now front and center to, um, okay, here's the Son of Man. Okay, this is a connection right here with the, the motherhood, and we've touched briefly on the divine um, motherhood, but we can keep this a little bit over here in focus. And then let's bring uh, witness of the stars. Now, how has and how is and how was the birth of Lich Tafari witness? Now, actually, in this particular book, the witness of the stars, there's a very this 1893 book, all right? This 1893 book explains this. So, this 1893 book we say gives us a a a um a witness of Rastafari. There's a witness, and it's a very powerful witness as well, of Rastafari, he who we call 
the Son of Man. He who fulfills what Jesus Christos prophesied of in that time to come. Now, this is also connected with the, with the return or the coming of Christ, the, the, the second advent, you know, what one speaks about, the second advent. This is why we say that before Rastafari and before this particular time, the prophecy that most of the world so-called believe, and still many of them be lai, the, 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 the whitewash, the antichrist, the, the false Christ, the counterfeit Christianity, has presented the world a false prophecy, like in the Matrix movie. Remember, Matrix means the womb, and in this particular um, um, series right here, in this portion of our Torah readings, number 27, is speaking about the Jah's law of of divine motherhood, you know. So some of the sisters and brothers may speak about gods and goddesses. And, and the true context of that, and we need to put that once again in its true context, because a lot of ones are going off the deep end. They are going into the void because they're going away from the word and the comprehension of what the word means. So when we speak about gods and goddesses, yes, I have said ye are gods. It is written. That is true. But it's in the context of sons and daughters of God. Now, to men and people, to the, to the Gentile and the Goyim and those who are illiterate of the true interpretation of those signs, the children of God do appear as gods. But, but we are not to um, go out of the way and go off of the way. You know what I mean? See, that's getting into ego. That's like a novice. Be like a novice, one who doesn't have any discipline or any discipleship. So what we read in the scriptures where it speaks about the novice and, and getting, like, puffed up, you understand, because um, they have knowledge maybe, but they don't have um, wisdom. Now, wisdom is that mother. Now, overstand the wisdom and mother connection. Even Christ said, I think it's 11 and 9. It's 11 and 9 because it seemed like the numbers was backward of 9 and 11. Matthew 11 and 9 said the wisdom is justified of her children. I think that, that, that's that quote there or perhaps 11 and 19. But the scriptures does say that wisdom is justified, right? That means made righteous of her children. Now, from Old Testament, you know that wisdom is, is, is um, personified as a female as a female, a, a female um, entity, let's put it like that. You understand? A, a, a female um, attribute of God, one that is, exists in itself, and people also possess of her, of that feminine attribute. Now, in English and in Western Gentile culture, a lot of this can be very confused because of the language, you know, because of this Western Gentile language. Now, the connection of wisdom of the stars to Rastafari revelation um, needs to be noted. And we're going to share with you a portion of this from, from um, the first part of this particular book right here. Um, when we go to page, we was reading this, and it was interesting because it says that um, the first book, right, the first book is occupied with the person of the coming one. It covers the whole ground and includes the conflict and the victory of the promised seed. You understand? Promised seed. So when we look at this Torah portion, it talks about what? It talks about, um, speaks to the children of Israel, saying, if a woman have conceived seed, that means that if the, the, the sperm and the ovum have been successful and have a relationship, you see what I'm saying? That's the conception right there of a woman is pregnant and, and born a man-child. Remember the New Testament, Christ's words speak about the son of man. The man-child is the son of man. And the Revelation also speaks about this man-child or this son of man. Now, heaven also, the heavens testify also, if you can read it, it testify to this man child as well. You know what I'm saying? But many people who can see are still blinded because they don't know the interpretation of it. Now this particular book, once again, Witness of the Stars, published in eighteen ninety three, one year 
um, after the Son of Man, when I was reading it, after looking at the first publication that we spoke about, a couple of vids um, prior or previous, we were re we was reading this portion right here, and it speaks about that that um, there's a special emphasis on his coming, just as there's been a special emphasis on the the coming of Christ and Judgment Day and the end of the world. Now the book it opens with the promise of his coming. And it closes with the dragon cast down, with the dragon cast down from heaven. Now, chapter 1, the, the sign of Virgo. Now, this takes place, right, this takes place in the sign of the virgin or in the sign of Virgo. And let's see if we can, um, let's see if we can uh, bring that bring that bring that up for you right here let's let's look on our drive right here and see if we can bring up um virgo you understand as as an evidence you understand as an evidence on exhibit let's search this and put this over here and see how the results how the results come along with that um so we can show you what's here actually in the book and um is uh is is it's so the Eurocentric from the Eurocentric perspective, each culture kind of, you know, put themselves in the story because it's a universal interpretation it's a it's it's a word for all nations, all people. Psalm one nineteen uh, Psalm nineteen actually explains the importance of the heavens. So you hear some folks beating up on so called astro theology and, and new ageism, so forth and so on. But um, we look for better things to come. So, yes, we look for a new age in the God and Father and through the God and Father, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos. But when we, think of, I, when we think of Virgo on one level, which is the virgin, it's the Latin way of saying virgin, there is also the virgin, the, the Hebrew overstanding of the virgin or of the maiden, of the maiden. Okay, we got some. We got some right here. Okay, that's the image that we want to present to you right here. It's this particular image right here. And then you can see the, um, the whitewash or the, the Jesuit, the Jesuit Mary there. We touched on that. Okay, that's the constellation right there. You see it? Let's see if we can um, rotate, if we can, if we can rotate this picture. Let's see if we can... Um, rotate this picture how would we have to um rotate this one rotate it like this here we go here we go so this is this is what in, in the book right here this is the image you'll see right and this is some of the images that are in the book now the amazing thing about this particular book right here witness of the stars is one is one is when it was written. One is it's what is in it, the contents of it. But then another aspect is, is, is when it was written. Now, what you see right here is actually the star pattern. All right? This would be the star pattern. Because this, was, this is what the ancient people of all cultures, this is what they were, um, this, is what they, this was like the TV, in other words. Right? This is what they watched on TV, the stars, the heavens. And this is where we get a lot of the so-called mythological or, or the mystery, the mysteries, the, the the wisdom, the ancient stories, based on God's word, written in the stars, witnessed in the stars. This is why it says from the very beginning of the Bible for signs and seasons and days and years. So if you look at this this um, format right here, I believe this is the this is the orientation of it. And you look at this right here. You can see that now different cultures would figure her maybe a little bit different, you know, like would draw in an image. You know what I'm saying? You can also see this as the, like the Mary, the Ethiopic Mary sitting on the chair with her hand stretched out. You know what I'm saying? Because she's holding the branch. Right? She's holding the branch. Now, the branch is actually connected over here. Yeah, well, well, not over here, but it's it's not going to be linked with this. This is the same divine woman, 
You know what I'm saying? It's the same, it's the same um, divine um, woman right there, right? Um, now, let's, uh, let's uh, probably have to make this smaller and maybe send it to the back for a moment so we can get back to the other images. This is actually coma or comma, right? Coma or comma. We'll put this right here, right? So she's holding a branch here. You see with this hand right over here, and she's holding a branch here, right, a branch, or a netza. Some say the netza. She's holding the netza, the branch. You know, that's why it says the man whose name is that branch. You understand? The man whose name is that branch. You can see it. You can see it like, you know, yeah. All right, so now I'm, I'm putting that there so you can understand that we're beginning with this particular sign and we're going to link with, with the woman, the seated, the seated woman, right, with the seated woman. Who is this woman seated? You understand now in the interpretation of it, it's very important to see and understand, you know, how this interpretation right there, the seated woman, is our Christian, our Christian, put this right here, is our Christian um, Mary or Black Madonna. You understand the seated, you can see the seated woman. This is not strictly looking at this, but this is based on this type as it has been passed down. You understand? As it has been passed down for for um, millennia. And then you have also in ancient Egypt, you have your 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 Isis figure right here. You know, and then the story, the telling of the story, and she's hiding you know, in, in like the marshes or the swamp, the reeds, you know, the kana. She's hiding in the kana, in other words, right? So now here's the promised seed, the Virgo. This is the sign Virgo. This is, so when you hear about virgin, we're saying um, dingle, dingle, dingle. The first and the original groundation of the whole idea of the dingle comes from this particular testimony that's written in the stars. You understand? That is witness. That's why it says in Revelation that the, that the heavens will what? Roll up like a scroll. You see what I'm saying? That the heavens will spin. He, he will shake the earth this once more. The heavens will roll up as a scroll because there's something written in the heaven, but not everyone can read. Now, the sign Virgo, or people read it differently, the promised seed of the woman. Here's where we speak about the promised seed of the woman. And this is what's linked in this Torah portion, Ki Tazria, you understand, or Bitareges, where 12 and 1 of Leviticus says, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Remember, who is Israel to Yah, to Jah? Who is Israel to the God of the Hebrews? Israel is his son. I've called my son, his chosen. So Israel. In the in the type of Hebrew theology is the Horus, is the collective Cheruyan, the collective chosen one, or the Shemsu in Cheru or Hor, Heru, the Shemsu Hor, you understand, or the followers of the chosen. Who are we as Christian in spirit and truth? Christ is that that chosen seed. So we have here the type if a woman have conceived seed and born a man child, a male child. Now we have a number now we have a number of days. There's an interesting matter about a number of days. That's getting now into some of the math. We're going to get into some of the math. First let's get the idea, the overall fact of this. Now, um, here is the commencement of all prophecy. In Genesis 3 and 15. If you read Genesis 3 and 15, here's the beginning of all prophecy that was spoken to who? To the serpent. What was spoken to the serpent? Quote, I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed, the seed of the serpent, the reptilian, the serpent, and her seed, the seed of the woman or the owl set, the owl set, the all set, the true woman, the owl set. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. This seed. Now, who is this seed? You understand? Know we say the seed in the prophetic fulfillment and in the Rastafari revelation. This seed is Lich Teferi, 
and this book, you know what I'm saying, will prove and proves it because already it's already a document, it's already an evidence. So this will be one of the evidences. This particular book right here, let's bring it forward. This particular book is an evidence, the witness of the stars. We're reading from page 29 right here. It says, this is the prophetic announcement which the revelation in the heavens and in the book is designed to unfold and develop. It lies at the root of all the ancient traditions and mythologies which are simply the perversion and corruption of primitive truth. Well, in the form of mythology that we've received today in our present time, yes, though there was some ancient truth, but in the form that it has come down to us, you know, like even the Easter egg and the bunny and a lot of this other kind of stuff, it's come down in a perverted way. But now when we get to the root, to true testimony, Virgo or the Dingo, right, the Dingo or Virgo, Right, and, and where's, where, where, where's Virgo? Let's see if we can bring Virgo uh, front and center again. Let's see. Okay, we showed it, but where's, okay, bring that back up there. All right, Virgo, I think we, I think we closed out of that particular one. Um, Virgo. All right, okay, here 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 she goes back here. All right, Virgo. All right, so you can see as much of this with one with one um with, with one view. All right. Onto to this in one view. So that's this is the book right here, eighteen ninety two. That's the man child born in eighteen ninety two. That's the Virgo constellation in, in the heavens. The the first one is the eschato eschatology, you understand, or is the spiritual, the, 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 the latter, fuller revelation of it, the black mother and child, the type. Now, she's that seated one, similar to the constellation we're about to come up to, but first she is the Virgo. You know, she's the Dingo, rather. She's the maiden. And she's represented as a woman with a branch in her right hand. She has a branch in her right hand and some ears of corn. It's interpreted corn. It could be Anna Bush in her left hand, thus giving a twofold testimony. This is giving right here, bring that front and center. This is what it's talking about. It's giving a twofold testimony as we look at this a little larger, a little larger right here. A twofold testimony. This is a twofold testimony, right? And remember the two truths. This is why that, that duality, the two truths, the two feathers of Ma'at, you understand? Father and son, that duality. Um, the twofold testimony of the coming one, of the one, the Ayu Sa, the Ayu So, you understand? Or the Yesus, the, the ever coming one. The, the name of this sign in the Hebrew is Bethula. The name of that sign in the Hebrew is Bethula. Or Bethula, you understand, which means a maiden or a virgin. And in the Arabic, it's a branch. In the Arabic, it's a it's a branch. So in one language, one people saw it as just a branch, right? Another people saw that as the dingil or the maiden. The two words are connected, as in Latin. When you go to Latin, you have Virgo, which means a virgin, and Virga, Virga. Virga actually means, in the Latin, it means a branch. Now, uh, another name is Sunbul, Sunbul, the Arabic, and that means an uh, uh, ear of corn. It's an, it's an ear of corn. Now, in Genesis 3 and 15, she's presented only as a woman. So when we look at it in the, in the Torah, in the Bible, she is presented as a, 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 a um, Isha. You understand? Or as a sate, satio, as a woman. But in later prophecies, her nationality is defined as being of the stock of Israel. You understand? But now we know she's of the stock of Israel. She's of the black race. You know? In the latter unfoldment now of this type and the manifestation, the, the, her nationality, 
defined as being of the stock of Israel. See Amos 9 and 7, aren't you as the children of the Ethiopians unto me, O children of Israel? Right? And then prophecy speaks about these two. These two will be made into one. You know, the staff, you understand, which was broken, would be united again. The seed of Abraham, the line of David, you understand, the lineage of great King David. And further, she is to be a virgin. She is to be a maiden, a dingle, as we say. There are two prominent prophecies of her and of her seed. So now we have this duality, the ma'at, the two truths. You understand? There's these two prominent prophecies of her and her seed. One is connected with the first coming in incarnation, Isaiah 7 and 14, which was quoted in Matthew 1 and 23. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and be a son, and shall call his name Amanuel, or as you would say, Emmanuel, but Amanuel. The other is connected with his second coming, leaping over the sufferings and this present um, interval of his rejection. So this time is sufferings, and it, we're living through this dispensation, which is sufferings and the present interval of his rejection. And in the same sense with the king of kings, this is the time that the Ethiopian Hebrews that we are, we are, we are going through. We are looking forward, you understand, to his, to his coming, you understand, or his, his revelation, you understand, to the coming age of glory, but also judgment is connected with it. Isaiah, Isaiah um, 9 and 6 and 7, which was quoted in Luke uh, 2, 11 and 1 and 32, 33, which says, For to us a child is born, to say man-child, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. Now, revealing this eschatology, now in and entering into human history or revelation, we have Lij Tefari fulfilling this. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And so when you see the, the angulet or the aguilet, you understand, with that rope on, on the shoulder in a sense, the government shall be upon his shoulder. Um, the Amsu, they were from ancient Egypt, that Amsu, uh, the raising of the hand, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, and it says, of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. So it's a lie them tell us, you understand, concerning the king of kings and concerning the so-called end of the monarchy. The monarchy con it still continues. You understand, it's been rejected from its rightful and proper um, place for a space and a season. But, you know, time to the almighty in, in, in that sense is only as they say, is only as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as a drop, in other words, in the proverbial, in the proverbial bucket. Let's see if we can find the, the picture that I think um, rightly and properly demonstrates this one here. This is the first one. You've seen this in some of the vids. And let's see if we can bring this up right here. You understand? This is this, is this verse right here, if you can if you can receive it. This verse right here. Let's read this verse from Isaiah 9, 6, and 7 that's quoted in Luke chapter 2, verse 11, and chapter um, 1, 32 to 30 and 33. Uh, it says, To us a child is born, right? A child. Uh, you get the idea of a baby or a young, younger one. A child is born, a blata, blatena. Um, to us a son is given. This one is now a son, a lidge. You understand? Um, uh, uh, the basic first title in, in the government of God, in the royal family, and the government shall be upon his shoulder. The government shall be his what? Response ability. He responds to the need of the government. The government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. You understand? The Mighty God, right? the everlasting or the eternal father or the father of the ages, right, Abba Kedus, Kedus Abba Tachin, the prince, 
right? The prince of peace, you can interpret that even in the sense of aras, or to say like the head of peace or the chief of peace. Of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. There shall be no end. Now it says, upon the throne of who? David. Now David is a real throne, and we know this. But in the Gentile world, they try to spiritualize the throne. I think if you read, go to Isaiah, um, the, the, the Schofield, they tell you down there that there's no need to spiritualize. They, were, they even admitted, the Schofield um, 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 people admitted that the throne of David is real. But, but they, 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 they were admitting that because other Christians had spiritualized it. It's like up in heaven, it's up in the clouds. No, it's a real throne, but it's not of the European you know, saying the rootage is of the Afro-Shemitic or the Ethiopian rootage, rootage or lineage. Amos 9 and 7 should clarify that. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom, the Malkut, to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice. So, we you know, when we recognize we get no justice over here. And you see, killing the youth... You know what I'm saying? Killing the child or the young black male is a sacrifice for the evildoers. That's why they keep doing this. Just to understand that, seeing so much of that going on in this present time. They're trying to make sacrifices to avert, you know what I'm saying, the Red Sea coming up. From henceforth, even forever, the zeal of Yahweh Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts. And now it uses hosts and the hosts are connected with the host of heaven. You know what I'm saying? The host of heaven. You know, the host of the heavens will perform this. It is difficult to separate the virgin and her seed in the prophecy. And so here we have first the sign of the virgin, where the name points to her as the prominent subject. So let's get back to the, to the dingo, you understand, know as the prominent um, subject. You understand the prominent subject of this particular um, eschatology. You understand, speaking about the more prophetic, you know, the more and symbolic, you know, spoken in like a parable, the parabolic, the verbal hieroglyphic on, on that sort of level. So um, we have first the sign of the Virgo or the sign of Dingo in the Gutters and in the Amharic, where the name points to her as the prominent subject say the maiden slash virgin, while in the first of the three constellations of this sign where the woman appears again, now the woman makes another appearance, this satio or auset, orset, the Egyptians would have called her the Isis, the orset, the name that appears is coma, is coma, like a coma, like coma. It points to the child as the great subject. The child is this particular great subject. And now coma is really the next section of this that we, first of all, want to link just the, 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 the imagery, the ancient imagery. You can see this is coma right here. She's seated. She has a child. You understand? Actually, she's holding the child in her hand. You know, one's my picture it like that, but it's this particular constellation. You understand? And it's, it's a story that is told. You understand? It's a story that is told. So when we speak about the gospel, you understand? When we speak about the real gospel, this is the real pointing of the real gospel. You understand? The heavens, what's figured in the heavens, and bringing that will of the Father to earth, establishing the kingdom on earth. Anyone who tells you otherwise as a Christian is an antichrist, that it's not about bringing heaven to the earth or establishing God's kingdom, then tell them, read, uh, read the Lord's Prayer. The Our Father Prayer again, study it. While in the first of the three constellations in this sign, where the woman appears again, the name Coma points to the child as the great subject. The child as the great subject. So what we're going to do is we're going to Go to this portion, the woman and the child. This woman and the child is called the desired, the desired of all nations. This is the desired of all nat nations. This is one of the reasons why, too, a lot of this, there's another level to the motherhood thing that most men and people 
barely overstand, you know? If you notice a lot of the actresses, when they get pregnant, they take pictures like a goddess or something like that. They are trying to tap into this, this new age, this spiritual energy, uh, somewhat misreading a lot of the signs, misinterpreting a lot of the signs. Mm -hmm. Then when you look at the black seed, you look at the black sheep, the sheeple, and you look at what they're going through, their sufferings, that reminds I and I of the first part of this, which talks about after Christ was rejected, the people, the Israelites, went through a period of suffering. And we got the tail end of it over here, the Ethiopian, Hebrews, African Americans, and blacks in the West, in the Americas and the Caribbean, you know, especially um, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi, especially, right? The fact is because the King of Kings, our Father, we humiliated him. You understand? We humiliated him as our God through the Son in the, in the Old and the first part of the New Testament, right? The opening of early Christianity. And then, even in this time, as careless, Ethiop as careless Ethiopians. As careless Ethiopians. So the fact of his humiliation, together with this long period, of his rejection, speaking about the rejection of Christ, the rejection, the twofold rejection of the Son, right? The Son, speaking of Christ, Yeshua, Joshua, as well as in these latter days, you understand, of the Father of Abba Kedus, you understand, of Kedemawi Haile Selassie. So the prophecy um, passes on at once at a at at over over at least a period, you understand, of some say one thousand eight hundred and ninety three years. Now this is another little footnote that we're noticing and noticing again here. Did you get that number? Eighteen ninety three years. The prophecy went from that time after they rejected Yeshua, you understand, a period of that many years. You understand? To roughly eighteen ninety two. You understand? And um, in this particular book by um, E.W. Bullinger, he points this out. You understand? He points this out. He testifies to this, and he points out even the date of a, of a celestial um, conjunction, a, a, a triple conjunction, and it's to this glory which should follow. And now the glory that we see following we see following in the revelation of Rastafari. That's why these three images right here, they will explain what you see according to the prophecy or eschatology, like, like in Isaiah. It speaks about a child. It speaks about like a prince, you understand, which is roughly, you could say, more middle age, like the middle picture. And then that of an old man, of an ancient one, of a fatherly type. Then it goes from a fatherly type to God. You understand, or to the father, you know, the, the Caduce, Abba, Abba Caduce, the father of modern Africa. So that might seem hard for some rejectors and, and haters to, to, to get, but go and try to disprove it according to the principles, you know, according to the knowledge and the science, and see if you can disprove it. But what we're going to do is go forward with, with this right here, coma, the woman and the child, the desired of all nations. Now, most folks say, well, if this is so, why is there so much, you know, why a woman and woman, womankind, you know, do go through their, their um, sufferations, you know, and there's a higher reason for this, and we go back to the Genesis prophecy, the hatred between the two seeds. You see, it's not just white and black, although there's a manifestation, you know, and a stirring up of, of the whole race war and the whole racial thing the racial paradigm and the whitewashing and the suppression of, of, of the true humanity of Christ and the true humanity of the dingo, the true humanity of, of the virgin, of the woman. So even today, most of the black women, you know, most women really, most of femininity are subjected, subjected to this downgrading, you understand, to this spiritual kind of pornography. Mm-hmm. And, and this ignorance as well. And it's because of the, the adversarial nature of the enemy. The, these weeds are being sold, and the weeds have been sold. 
So the first constellation in Virgo now explains this coming branch will be a child, that this branch is going to be a child, and that he should be the desire of all nations. He should be the one that all nations uh, desire. You understand? He is the desirable one of all. Now, this explains in Revelation, I mean, Genesis, when it says, and your desire shall be to your husband. You know, Sam, because if you remember the whole Cain and Abel thing, it's like Cain had a different seed to him. Abel, we know from the cover and the guest, was like to his father, and then, then, then Sate, you understand, know or Seth, you understand, know was then that one who would carry on, you know, the, 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 the type of the lamb that was slain, you know, Abel or Abel, the righteous Abel. You know, so you see that connection right there with that word desire right there. Um, the ancient name of the constellation was Koma, was Koma. You understand? It was Koma or Kema, Kema or Kama, Kama, right? Kama. And this is a Hebrew word that's found in like the Psalms, my flesh longeth for thee, which is, which is one link of, of desire right there in Psalm LXIII1 or Psalm um, uh, 63 and 1. You understand? Psalm 63 and 1 where it says, my flesh longeth. My flesh desires for you, for thee. So the flesh, when the flesh begins to desire for the spiritual, it's, it's beginning the process of going from mortality to immortality to that transformation. You understand? Know to that, to that um, regeneration. You understand? Know That's that longing, that desire of even ancient man for eternal life because something that he had lost. You understand? He has lost at a at a real deep nature. He can recognize that now. Now the process of redemption now was spoken about ever since the beginning. So when we go out to different nations and ancient nations and their mythologies, and they talk about woman and the child, they are interpreting or misinterpreting the clear signs, the evidence that's right there in the heavens for all for all people. You right? So coma means the desired or the longed for. We have the word used by the Memphis Kedusa, the Ruach HaKodesh, in this very connection in Hage, in Hage 2 and 7, where it says, the desire of all nations shall come. The one whom all nations desire shall come. And we see the manifestation of that one in our times in Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And who is Hala Selassie bearing witness of? Is he speaking of himself, saying, yeah, 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 I'm great and all that? No, he's speaking of Yeshua HaMoshiach. You understand? He, he's testifying to Yeshua in spirit and in truth, in his humanity, in his, his real world manifestation. Yoras, in visiting all nations. Now, the ancient zodiacs, they pictured that this constellation as a woman with a child in her arms. So, in the ancient constellation, this in the ancients, they picture this as a woman with a child in her arms. They call her, um, or there's the Al Abu Mazar, or the Abu Masher. This is an Arabian astronomer of the 8th century. He says this that there arises in the first decan as the Persians, Chaldeans, and Egyptians, and the two Hermes and Ascalius teach a young woman whose Persian name denotes a pure virgin sitting on a throne, nourishing an infant boy. The boy, I say, having a Hebrew name by some nations called, right, um, Ehesus, I-H-E, or Ehesus, or Ehesus, Ehesus, with the signification uh, Eza, or Eza, Eza, Isa, like I-E-Z-A, which in Greek is called Christos. So in Greek now, this one is called Christos. So this is the 8th century um, Abu Masha, Arabian astronomer who noted that, that there was this woman who was sitting on a throne and she's nourishing an infant boy. And the boy, I say, having a, a Hebrew name by some nations called Isa or Esu, 
and the signification Esau, Ezra, and the Greeks call them Christos, the anointed. But this picture is not found in any of the modern map of the stars. And this is why this, this book is so interesting, too, um, um, the witness of the stars as well. It's a testimony he's given one year after, you understand, know one year after Lij Tafari was born. Right in the biblical land of Cush. Now think about that in context of the prophecy in Amos, speaking about the restoration and, and, and raising up the ruins of David, which were thrown down. Look at that that powerful link right there. But this is not the picture that's found in any of the modern map of the stars. So if you follow modern uh, uh, astrology and astronomy, they don't have this in their maps. There we find, and this was the wildness, folks. Yo, 